Evans has to replace his entire front line from last year's Big East champs. He's relying on sophomores, guard Jason Matthews, and the rapid development of center Bobby Martin. It's Pittsburgh and Florida next on USA. O'Connell Center on the campus of the University of Florida in Gainesville. Tonight, the defending Big East Conference champion, Pittsburgh Panthers, meet the Florida Gators. And good evening, everybody. I'm Ted Robinson, and welcome to USA Sports College Basketball. Back in September, you look at this game and say, hey, this could be a premier game all year. Two nationally ranked teams, maybe, but no reality has set in. And Bucky Waters, although these are two talented teams that should be playing in March right now, neither coach can be happy with what he's done. No, I think it'd be a cheap shot to build this as SEC you know, and Big East. Uh, neither of these teams or coaches give a flip right now about conference prestige or anything else. They got some struggling teams, teams with great deal of talent that if they fall together can make a run in their leagues. But right now, both hovering around 500, lots of question marks. The Pitt team lost two first-round draft choices. They're still trying to fill that hole in the middle. Rod Brooken is a guy who had a great freshman year for Pitt. His sophomore year was a disappointment. Right now, he's 30 pounds overweight, and he may not even start tonight. And this is a ploy by Paul Evans to get the big guy to come around and play. But if they're going to be a great team, he's got to do it. And as Paul Evans says, he can be a great offensive player. Well, while Pittsburgh has to replace its front line, Florida has had to replace its backcourt. That's been trouble. Them, but their front line is great. You hear a lot about Dwayne Shinsett, but they have a super sophomore in Livingston Chapman. Boy, they do. His nickname is Liv, and it's really uh, well-deserved. The guy is full of life, and he's all over that offensive board. He was one of the top five freshmen in the country, and he has great skills compared to uh, players like J.R. Reed, Wayman Tisdale, and that's not off the wall. His rookie game as a Gator was 25 points and seven rebounds against Georgia Tech of the ACC, and he hasn't looked back. One of the reasons and Chins's numbers aren't better. It's a guy like Chapman. He comes, plays hard. And another story tonight. Last year, national TV, Pitt dominated Florida. Beat him bad. Norm Sloan tonight says, I want my team to show Pittsburgh we're a lot better than they were a year ago. So it's Florida and Pittsburgh coming up next on USA. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, achy, stuffy head, fevers, so you can rest medicine. It's been the world's best-selling car six years running. Maybe it's because of features, reputation, or overall value. Whatever it is, it's no big surprise if you've driven a Ford Escort lately. Winning the world over. Now get a $500 cash bonus on Ford Escort. Sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, so you can have a silent night medicine. Soar beyond your expectations. Today, the Prudential can show you a new world of financial opportunities. Look to the rock for stocks and bonds, mutual funds. Feel its strength in CDs, insurance, and mortgages. With the right choices, the right guidance, you can move mountains. The Prudential, your rock in financial services. Just when you thought you knew which battery was best for your car, along comes this dynamo, the Megatron 34 from Interstate, the runaway leader in every performance test by America's leading consumer products rating service, with cranking power that ran circles around better-known brands and reserve energy that left others stranded. Megatron 34 from Interstate. A bit of a show-off, perhaps. But then, it did test best. Ask for it. As they have won 
42 of their last 47 games here at the O'Connell Center, and they've won their last 24 non-conference games here. It won't be filled tonight because of the impending, of course, Christmas break. A lot of the students have gone home. Norm Slaw would like to see this building become the pit that it was for the last couple of years. But well, I've been in here for SEC games, and uh, when the students are here, and they are developing quite a reputation for uh, for home court enthusiasm. But it's a, definitely an advantage for Pitt to come in here during the holidays. Uh, this is a non-student crowd, basically, and I think they definitely have an advantage. And of course, uh, we know the problems that uh, Florida has had uh, with their defense. And I think if there's one thing that a home crowd helps, it helps the uh, the tenacity of your defense, especially if you're trying to play some pressure. Now, defensive tenacity has been kind of lacking for both teams so far. This United coach happy with the way that's happening. Florida has had a ton of turnovers. They expect to see pressure on their guards tonight. Well, of course, a big story for Florida this year in the early going, Dwayne Shinsis. He was suspended by the university for the first four games this season. An incident that occurred off the field in which Shinsis was involved with swinging a tennis racket at someone. Earlier this month, at Florida State, Shinsis introduced, and look what happens. The crowd reacts with a flurry of tennis balls. At other times, this may have really bothered Shinsis. But the reaction that night was he took it in stride. He was smiling. Thank goodness he didn't go at him with a golf club. Uh, with, with that volley, <laughs> it could have been painful. Uh, Sloan uh, goes into great detail talking about the maturity and the development. He came to Florida at 17 years of age, only 20 now. He feels like he's right on schedule. Storm and Norman has mellowed. As he looks now uh, at the close of a career, he definitely will step down as the Gators head man at the close of the 1991 season. And as we noted tonight in the pregame, Joanne Sloan has been singing the national anthem for him wherever he's coached. And uh, they're also going to have to find a new opening act. Paul Evans, third year at Pitt, has a great reputation for discipline, no nonsense, come at you basketball. And uh, anybody that coaches six years at Navy and beats Army all six years has definitely won a place and, uh, <laughs> among our men in blue all over the world. Now the last two centers he's coached, David Robinson and Charles Smith. That's not bad. And Paul Evans already has had a great early signing season for next year. He has signed three top uh, high school seniors for next year. Now Pittsburgh. let's get the starting lineups for tonight's game. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, wearing double zero, Brian Shorter. At forward, a 6'4 sophomore from Pittsburgh, number 20, Darrell Porter. At center, a 6'9 sophomore from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 55, Bobby Martin. At guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Los Angeles, California, number 22, Jason Matthews. And at guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, number 3, Sean Miller. The head coach for Pittsburgh, Paul Evans. And now for the University of Florida Fighting Gators. At forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Lakeland, Florida, number 32, Livingston Tuckman. At forward, a 6'7 sophomore from St. Petersburg, Florida, number 50, Dwayne Davis. At center, a 7'2 junior from Brandon, Florida, number 33, Dwayne Simpson. At guard, a 6'3 senior from Pensacola, Florida, number 23, Clifford Lett. And at guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Tampa, Florida, number 20, Ronaldo Garcia. And the head coach for the Fighting Gators, Norm Sloan. If Florida wins tonight, Norm Sloan ties Cam Henderson for 10th place on the all-time coaching victory list. Opening tip-off from Gainesville is next.
When you've got diarrhea, you can take this And when you're in real trouble, now you can choose new maximum strength Pepto-Bismol. Twice the medicine, twice the Pepto. Ah. For years, you've seen some commercials where one battery company's toys outlast the other toys. So you may have assumed their battery outlasts even Energizer batteries. Fact is, Energizer was never invited to their playoffs. And today's Energizer won't be invited either. Why? Because no battery lasts longer than Energizer. So now you know. A word to the wise. Energize. We're set to go in Gainesville. Pittsburgh and Florida. Pittsburgh four and three, Florida four and four. There are your lineups. The edge, of course, goes to Florida up front and to Pittsburgh in the backcourt with that talented duo of sophomores. Trio of ACC officials tonight. Lenny Works will throw the ball up. Florida in the white, Pittsburgh in the dark, the blue. And Florida with the ball to start. Ronaldo Garcia, now the point guard for Florida. His first start since they played in the Alaska shootout. Norm Sloan looking for better point guard play. And Garcia, who's a good shooter, hits the shot for the first basket. No secret where the Gators are trying to go early. Down inside to the big fella. Alert defense. Pitt trying to front that post area, trying to use their quickness. No way they can match up once he gets it inside. Nice pass. Darrell Porter hitting Brian Shorter in the lane. And Shorter, leading scorer for the Panthers at 18 a game, gets the hoop. And Sean Miller of Pitt picks up the foul. Porter starting for Rod Brooken, as we mentioned at the top of the show. Much better defense. And Paul Evans hoping to get the Brooken to come in and play up to his potential, at least what he showed as a freshman. As expected, Pitt showing a little pressure. The Florida backcourt has been shaky. That's kind. <laughs> well, They've had a ton of turnovers in their first eight games of the year. Norm Sloan said he knew it was going to happen. He knew he was going to struggle in the backcourt this year. Oh, nice pass. Shinsis may be the best passing big man in the game, and he hits Chapman for the hoop. Jason Matthews for three, and Pitt has the lead, 5-4. Oh, there's a big target in the middle of the floor. Very tough to press a team that has a seven-footer who's always an easy outlet and can make the big play from out there. Actually, the whole front line of, uh, of Florida is very adept at passing. Oh, uh, Shinsis with a pretty little turnaround. Hectic well, pace right now, Ted. Uh, Pitt needs, I think, slow down just a little bit get their bearings. It's all right for the home team to come out, please. And I think that team on the road needs to settle down a little. Ryan Shorter down low. That's out of bounds. It'll come back into Pittsburgh. Just the first three trips down the floor, though, Bucky Norm Sloan has to be happy. He's had a slow starting team this year. Yeah, and you don't normally see Paul Evans' teams with a ball going right into the post. It takes a lot of pride in his defense with justification. He's very concerned about his defense right now. Well, two threes in a row by Jason Matthews. From the left coast, the L.A. kid has some shooting stroke. Whoa. But there again, they're jacking it up very quick. Well, it's eight to six. Pittsburgh, two minutes into the game. Garcia. Most teams will give Florida that shot. And that ball overthrown. Bobby Martin on the outlet to Darrell Porter. Turns it right back over to Florida. Had only one missed shot. In fact, that one by Garcia was the first miss of the game. Porter gets a hand on that. Even though Shinsis does take the pressure off against full court pressure, it's got to take something out of the big guy when he has to patrol the center of the court to be that outlet. Chapman uh, hit on the way up on the baseline, and Livingston Chapman will go to the line. Whereas we talked about Brooken being up about 30 pounds, 
Chapman, who was the four spot of the power forward last year, has trimmed 30 pounds, and he's made that man, Norm Sloan, very happy. He's had frequent knee uh, scopes, but uh, basically it's just a, a cleansing exercise. Structurally, he's fine. It just seems to be something they're going to have to continually do. They've been doing it, and obviously, by the way he moves on the court, it has not hampered his performance. Now, losing the weight will help, should help lessen the knee problems as well. He had three arthroscopes done during the year last year, and he was still one of the all-freshmen in the nation last year. What a marvelous procedure that is. I think of all the great players over the years, had that been available, how much it would have added to their careers. We just didn't know. Tied at eight after the foul shots, and Garcia got a hand in there on Porter, and a steal by Florida. Clifford Lett. Clifford Lett finishing off on the break, and Florida has the lead back 10-8. to eight. Florida running very well. Now Matthews, that time, had an open three, and for some reason he took a step inside the lane. That's always a dumb shot. And they're going to call a foul there on Shinsis. The big guy has had some phobia with fouls. As a freshman, he was a renowned rejector. Then they got concerned about the number of minutes he was playing and uh, went to a more standard. Let's watch, see if we can get the foul. We certainly didn't see a foul on Chinsis on that play. Meanwhile, Miller missed a three, and going down, Garcia has that ball spiked over the shoulder by Jason Matthews. Matthews not only has three-point range, he can motor. Great pursuit that time. Good leaping guard. Actually, most of your steals in a good pressing defense will come from behind. That's a, that's a little known fact. Pittsburgh's going to have trouble if Florida gets the ball to Shinsis down there. Bobby Martin's giving away five inches and basically can do nothing. He's got to utilize his quickness, get out there in front. If he plays behind, not only can Shinsis turn and do it to you, he's a great passer. He just can't handle the ball. <laughs> There's the lead on the fast break, Shinsis. Meanwhile, Wayne Davis winds up back with it. Shins is the most surprised guy in the building on that pass. Well, the three front court, got, look at this. He didn't even see that ball court. It was right on his nose. That had to be the worst possession to result in two points that Norm Sloan had seen in his coaching career. That will not go in the highlight, Phil. But this crowd loved it. And Florida quickly out to a six-point lead. Miller does the roulette spin it out. On that shot, it's rebounded by Dwayne Davis. He took the shot off the dribble, though, and that's key. This is one of the areas that Miller has to improve. An excellent standing shooter. Rainbow missing a volleyball tap by Shinsis, misses, and Martin pulls it down for Pitt. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back. There was nobody around. He had plenty of time to come down, power up, and probably get a foul in the bargain. Pitt trying to get a little composure here. Darrell Porter, wild move in the lane, but he draws the foul. He got Shinsis up in the air, but they're going to give the foul to Chapman. Norm Sloan said he started the season really with hopes of running and gunning and uh, playing an up-tempo, high-powered game. And a phenomenal series of injuries set in. Cesar Petillo, the 6'9 freshman. Danny Walker became a prop, another great freshman at 6'8, became a prop 48. And Stacy Poole, another great freshman, tore an Achilles tendon. All of a sudden, he didn't have the depth. Now he's primarily concerned with getting 35 minutes a game out of his front court of Chapman and Chinsis and Davis. So the desire to press and run has had to be uh, pulled back quite a bit. And I think probably the backcourt that he has would have been much better had he been able to play that wide open game. They have really struggled in the half court. Two foul shots by Darrell Porter of Pittsburgh, and we have a timeout. Five minutes into the game, Florida leading hit 14 to 10. Fancy perfuming aftershave. Got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva man. Look for aqua velva Christmas gift sets. From the frigid Great Lakes. It all consults their butts. That's all I ever needed. To the icy mountains of Oregon. It's been excellent for me. More and more Americans are taking Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. In a word, it works. 
You know, Cinemax has over 130 different movies a month. Big movies, exciting movies. Showtime only has about half that many. So where are the rest? With the check that's in the mail? Sure. Showtime has more repeats. They show a movie over and over again until you feel like you want to send flowers. That's fine. There are some people who enjoy having just one necktie so they can really get to know it. Maybe they'd like memorizing one of these. Of course, there's the rest of us. Is there a case? We should be on Wheel of Fortune. Anna. Think you can beat the contestants, huh? Well, yeah. yeah. Then try TV Play Along Wheel of Fortune, the new game that picks up a signal from your TV. You can spin, choose letters, and actually play against the contestants on the show. N, please. No, L. Look. Amazing, huh? Wow. TV Play Along Wheel of Fortune. B or D? Try and see. <laughs> Season's greetings to all of you on USA Tonight. It doesn't feel much like Christmas here. 75 degrees today in Gainesville, Florida. Got a little tennis in with Monty Tao, the associate head coach of the Florida Gators. And he plays tennis like he played basketball in Norm Sloan's 74 champion. Some Scrappy. competitor. Yes, indeed. Monty Tao may be the man to succeed Norm Sloan here in two years when Sloan steps down in Florida. He's given an excellent chance, but there have been no guarantees. Three-pointer by Brian Hogan, a freshman guard in the game for Florida misses, and we have a rebounding foul on Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh with some changes, 42 Gilbert Johnson is in the game. And Johnson picks up the foul. That's his first and the third team. Johnson, good offensive rebounder, really has some talent. Got some bad knees as well. We'll have surgery. And 41 for Florida in the game is Michael Kerr, and he rips that rebound down and is fouled. And it's just blatant in the first five minutes where the Florida is pounding Pittsburgh on the boards. Michael Kerr is a football player who uh, is sitting out his football career and has come in to help Norm Sloan because of all those injuries we just enumerated. He's an outside linebacker. They have a different mentality than inside linebackers, I think. Yeah, what is it? I don't know. I guess they're not as mean, but this guy can play. I'm telling you, he's a pretty good basketball player. Had a nice high school career, but basically he's just in here as a stopgap. That's how tough it was for Norm Sloan. Three players who were going to play as freshmen this year. All of them were forwards. Want a swing, man. All three are out. I don't know when they're going to get any of them. But this is what's been killing Pittsburgh this year. Offensive rebounding. Shinsis with eight points already. And Florida leading by six. Tom Grice, the seven-footer for Villanova. Some similarity in the styles of play. Not your, not your ultra-active center, but very effective. Good touch. Seemed to be in the right place at the right time. Grice, of course, made the marvelous ascension in one year. Seemed to come from nowhere. Cintrus, on the other hand, has just kind of come along on, on schedule each year. A little better, a little better. And right now, in the, again, the early going here, the turnovers are plaguing Pittsburgh much more than Florida. And Florida has been a turnover plague team in its first eight games. Great passing. Shinsis drops it. Kerr saves it. And finally, a walk is called on Shinsis, who punts the ball in anger and got away with it. I'll tell you, if he turns to football, he should have pretty good range with that leg. He is very fortunate he did not get a technical call, and he is now drawing with Lenny Wirtz. Now, I don't want to say anything about a mismatch. Lenny Wirtz is about 5'4". It's like Bambi and Godzilla. Miller, nice setup to Jason Matthews, who drills his third three. He has nine of the 13 Panther points. And Florida leads by three, 13-15 to go first half. And look at Shinsis, Phil oh. Lane, and he has 10 points already. The personality of this Florida team, Ted, the guards are very tentative against the press. Once the ball gets into the front court, though, the front court of the Gators, they go right for the hoop. They're very aggressive. And Matthews on the drive, draws the foul. And Rod Brooken getting off the bench. So you'll see Brooken for the first time tonight. 
He has struggled terribly thus far, shooting just 32%. Rod Brooken in his first series of games this year. This is a guy that was one of the premier freshmen in the Big East two years ago. How does 44 from the foul line? Does that indicate a lack of something? Before everybody jumps off buildings, though, keep in mind, we are still December, and there is so much basketball to be played. Michael Kerr with the foul. Jason Matthews, two foul shots. He has 11 points of the 15 for Pitt. Florida by three. Brooklyn on the front of that press makes it very slow. That's a soft press. Now they're back into his own. They have not altered their defense. They may not be aware since this is out of the game. And Chapman missing the dunk, and then Kerr is going to be called for the foul. That's good in football, but not in basketball. That's two fouls on Kerr. Paul Evans prefers the man for man. I have to feel he's going zone to try to protect. Let's look inside. Getting down the baseline. Brooklyn came across to give good help. Oh, one of those embarrassing moments. And hung on the rim. Florida again escaping a technical foul. Princess, having heard about his drop kick from Coach Sloan, will be coming back in. Gilbert Johnson did a nice job. You can find that muscle Kerr out of the way there and hit the layup. Kerr was backed into by a double wide. And when you take the outside linebacker out that easily, you're pretty strong. And now Shinsis after a very brief breather is back in and he replaces Michael Kerr. So Florida with its starting five back on the court. A one-point Florida lead, Pittsburgh ball. Well, 10 to go first half. Yeah, you get the feeling, even with this crowd support, Florida playing very, very well. Then you look up at the scoreboard, Pitt not appearing to be playing very well. And uh, they're only down one. That bodes well for the Panthers. Now those three threes by Matthews made a big difference early. Another nice pass by Shinsis. Davis going for the slam. He's fouled. Boy, that front court of Florida, Ted, they sense uh, a front court for Pitt that just isn't physically able to handle them, and they're just attacking the basket. If you can look at a shot chart already, Bucky, I'm sure you'd see every Florida shot's coming in the paint, and every Pittsburgh shot's going to be away from the basket. I recall Garcia with a couple of jumpers, one he hit, one he missed, and you're right, everything else has been just pounded against the glass. Can Chinsis find the open man and get it to him? Excellent. Oh. That was a unique foul shot from Dwayne Davis. He tried to bank it home. You, you have to call those. If you don't call bank, they don't count. Minnesota Fats said that, right? That's right. Davis makes the second one. We have timeout at 11.53 to go in the first half of Gainesville, Florida leading by two. I'm Mike Lindretti. I have the power to do anything I want in any of my own cars using powerful Astrolite batteries. On the road, off the road, or around the town with Astrolite batteries. Astrolite batteries with advanced technology to give you all the power you want for any of your cars. No matter what car you drive. Astrolite gives you the power. I'm Pat Sajak. In case you haven't heard, I'm hosting my own late night talk show on CBS. That's why I asked my band leader, Tom Scott, to come up with a classic late night theme. Gee, he was so good at that wedding. Now that's more like it. Coming to CBS Late Night. by two and now we're going to take you through flashback to Bucky Waters childhood did you learn this on the streets of New Jersey when you were a kid <laughs> no but this kid is Sean Miller and he grew up in Beaver Falls Pennsylvania and if he can't be a better quarterback than hometown Joe Namath you go to another sport and he dazzled the world with that performance and just a few years later he was an all Big East selection as a freshman and now as a sophomore one of the fine point guards in the country and he still handles it pretty good. Off Bobby Martin's hands. And Shinsis with a big rebound. That's what Florida wants to see from Shinsis, too. A little more of that big rebound on the defensive board. He's up to 270. 
and it looks good on him. And Clifford Lewis drills the three and is fouled. The emotion from Dwayne Shintis. He went out and gave Lett a high five that rung his bell. I'll be amazed if he hits his free throw. <laughs> he gave him a high five. It could have sprained both his ankles. He's got to be careful with that uh, enthusiasm, does the big fella. <laughs> Shorter back in for Pitt. <laughs> I'd like to shoot this free throw, but my shoulder's dislocated uh, during that short pep rally I have on my center. He got fouled by Gilbert Johnson, too. The foul had to hurt. That's three on Johnson. Six on Pitt. A four-point play by Clifford Lett. And Florida has a six-point lead. Oh, yeah. Nice double screens down inside. The Gators going man for man. And they're playing with a lot more intensity defensively. Three-pointer by Brooken. He can do that. Rod Brooken. Maybe that's a sign that tonight will be a night he breaks out of a woeful shooting slump. 23-20, Florida. Paul Evans used that term. Needs a breakout game. Confidence is not there. Not playing well. But everybody knows he can do it. He's demonstrated that. Garcia hitting Davis inside. That's tipped by a Pittsburgh player to be Florida's ball. Tough early season schedule for Florida. They've already played and lost to Illinois at Illinois. Played LSU here and got blitzed on a freshman record 53-point game by Chris Jackson of LSU. Pittsburgh, only their second road game of the year. Their first road game was Monday night. They lost to their rivals in Pittsburgh, Duquesne. Tough loss. Duquesne out rebounded Pittsburgh by 10. Hard to believe. A shorter is called for traveling. They've lost two neighborhood battles recently. West Virginia, and there's very little love with the Mountaineers in Pitt. I can attest to that, having coached the Mountaineers. And both teams beat them badly on the offensive board. Oh, Clifford left. Clifford Lett, the only senior on the skater team, takes it all away, manages to avoid the charge, and it was Len Wirtz's call, and you saw the baseline block signal given. He's a second guard, but he can motor. Excellent defensive player, been playing behind Moten and Maxwell, and not truly appreciated for his talent. This year, as the only senior, and he has been elected captain, they're expecting big, big things of him. Now he's a main man. He's no longer a backup. Changes for both clubs. Kelly McKinnon, 44, is in the game for Florida. He's a freshman. And Pat Cavanaugh, number 12, a junior, guard in the game for Pitt. Clifford Lett with nine points now. McKinnon's, Pat. excuse me, Ted, good outside shooter. So far, though, Florida has not had to resort to outside shooting against his own. Now, there's a mismatch down here. Brooken, well, seeing that mismatch, Brooken outweighs McKinnon by about 60 pounds. He just posted him up and hit the turnaround. Five points for Rod Brooken. Kavanaugh in the game now for Pitt. Tough kid, also the captain. He was selected, though, by Paul Evans. He wasn't elected. 26-22, Florida, 9.45, first half. And what? Clifford Lett on a tear has 12, and Florida leads by seven. Coast to coast for the layup, three-point range, and now he's guarding Sean Miller, a key defensively for the Gators. Biggest lead for Florida, and they'll get a chance to extend it, traveling on Martin. Just under 10 minutes, 9.28. The Gators already with 29 points, playing at a high scoring capacity. They've gone over 100 in their last two games. And they've sure had it scored against them. As well. no! Three point basket for Clifford Lett. Thought they were gonna get him for that little shuffle before he shot it. So did Paul Evans. In Pittsburgh last year, Pittsburgh humiliated this Florida team. Dwayne Shinsis went one for 12, 
there's been some conversation uh, around town since we've been here about a little revenge factor. And certainly, Florida remembers that game. It was a nationally televised game, and uh, they wanted to uh, simply claim turnabout is fair play with this nationally televised game. So far, they have come out well. One of the problems with Florida is they have not started their games very well. They did Monday night against Miami. Uh, part of the problem there, according to Sloan, with so few guys in practice, they haven't practiced hard. They haven't practiced well. And they have started games playing poorly as they've been playing in practice. So they've turned that around the last two games. Good sign for the game. Now they're going to say it was a two-point basket by Lett. And the foul was away from the ball on Brian Shorter, his second. So Davis at the line, shooting a one-and-one one with Pittsburgh over the limit. And he misses that. And the Panthers have it. So it's 31-22, Florida. And here's Shorter in the lane. Little jump hook goes for points for Brian Shorter. Boy, it wasn't long ago since this would have been flailing for that ball. As long as disciplined him not to go for the block because it takes him out of the rebounding position. Yeah, it gets him in foul trouble, and they're just not the same team when he's not available. That's a three for Clifford Lett. He is on fire. 17 points for Clifford Lett in the first half. And Florida leads by 10, the biggest lead, at 8.35 to go in the half. And Shorter, for some reason, gave up a shot there. He had a little chippy inside. He gave it up. It was out of bounds. Turnover. I contend that when you have a seven-footer on the floor, sometimes those things happen. I don't think Shorter knew who was behind him. But somehow, the spirit moved him that he thought the mountain was there. And he thought, well, I'll just show the coach I can get an assist right here and probably live to play another game. Well, Florida which has been averaging seven more turnovers a game than their opponents. An incredible number, only three thus far. And how about that assist? Shinsis from under the basket to let for a three. That play tells you a lot. Shinsis didn't throw it over everybody. That was a waist-high bullet, a diagonal all the way across the court. He was looking for it. I wouldn't be surprised if Sloan hasn't told him, hey, you keep getting it to let until he misses. And if you're Paul Evans, you get somebody to get, get and let's shirt. Foul him if you have to. He is on fire. Clifford Lett has 20 points. Now you get the ball with a seven-footer right on the block. Now should he take it right? Watch his pass. Nolan Ryan, three-quarter speed. Right to Lett, who was just set up beautifully for it. I bet you they go to Lett till he misses. How about a big man? Chances with four assists already. Florida by 13. Being a gumshoe takes guts, charm, and a persuasive personality. You forgot assault. Private Eye on USA, Sunday at 10. This Thursday and Friday only, save 20 to 60% off merchandise in every department. Carl and Bob's in Patchogue and Edward Allen in Lake Grove, Southampton and East could have everything you need for that regular sized or big and tall man on your holiday shopping list. Just in time for Christmas. The Patchogue store is open until 12 midnight. All other locations are open until 9 p.m. So hurry down to Carl and Bob's and Edward Allen. Sale is Thursday and Friday only. Have a happy holiday. This Christmas season, 8 Auto Stores is your gift-buying headquarters because everyone drives. So at 8 Auto Stores, you can buy gifts for everyone. 8 Auto Stores' huge selection make useful gifts that are practical and fun. And we've got gift certificates, too. Great gifts start with great gift ideas. 8 Auto's gift suggestion department makes it easy to choose the perfect present for that special someone. For great gifts this holiday season, put 8 Auto Stores, your automotive Christmas department store, at the top of your list. Happy Holidays from Brookhaven Cable. Presentation at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, Florida putting on a show here in the first half. Dwayne Shinsis, 10 points, 4 assists. Clifford Lett with 20 points already. We still have 8 minutes to go in the half. And another pit turnover, and here's Garcia. It's getting away from Pitt real fast, Bucky. And they're, and they're not going to change things until they settle down a little bit and make the Gators work on defense. Everything is one dribble, one pass, and a shot. 
Florida has not had to work on the defensive end. It's been very quick. It's been a chuck and duck kind of approach. And while Pitt was matching in basket for basket, that was all right. They've gone cold. Now they're looking at a 15-point deficit, but a team that's very capable of catching up. There's Steve Maslick in for Pitt for the first time. 6'9", Jr. Places Bobby Martin. Let's talk about that last pass Shinsis through last time down. You like the big man passing from down there? No, I didn't. Uh, when he got the ball on the box, right down there on that low post, facing the basket, Brian Shorter was the only thing between him and a slam dunk or an easy layup. Shorter being 6'6", giving away like eight inches. I would have preferred the big man to take the ball right up as opposed to making a difficult pass to the outside for a three-point shot. That's philosophy. Offensive rebound, there's a shot by Shinsis, and it's tipped out to Matthews of Pittsburgh. Well, he's been quiet for a while. Nice bounce inside, Kavanaugh delivered that nicely to Brian Shorter, and Shinsis picks up his second foul. So going right to work on Shinsis' head. He has not handled the foul situation well from a psychological standpoint. They're shorter. I saw no foul. The big man just simply put his hand straight up. That's one of those calls, the old verticality theory, that somehow still manages to go to the offensive player moving in. Dick Papara said he got him with the body. Uh, that's a no call. Brian Shorter. Prop 48 casualty last year after a great high school career in Philadelphia. And he's been the leading scorer for Pittsburgh in the early going. 18 a game. He has six here. And it's 39 28 Florida. Pitt backing off from that pressure now. Working over the left shoulder of Chapman. Trying to get it to Davis down low and it's stolen. Here's Brooken. He has the three. Gives it up to Kavanaugh for three. And Pat Kavanaugh. First shot, three-point goal. Well, it narrowed it from 15 to 8. Just by taking good shots, still putting it up a little quick. Kavanaugh has been very good for this team. And that's what Pitt can't stop, but Schitz just doesn't get a roll, and Dwayne Davis has been a monster on the boards for Florida this year. We'll go to the line. Schitz is a little too uh, confident with that. Should have taken the ball up with two hands. Wayne Schintz is amazingly candid. He said during the summer, last year when Florida had a terrible time down the stretch, he said, I wasn't very mature, I wasn't very responsible, I cared more about my own stats. But the Olympic experience this year when he got down to the final 21 apparently made a big difference. Schintz's father said he has grown up. When your dad says that, it means something. <laughs> He ought to know what he's talking about. I think there are two factors to that grow-up statement. One, just being able to make it to the final 21 players and know that he can play with those guys. That was a confidence thing. And then handling the rejection of being cut right at the end after getting your hopes up to be on our Olympic team. It's much more painful in the last cut than it is in the early cut because your hopes somehow get higher. There's a pretty drive, Jason Matthews. Sophomore from Los Angeles, 15 in the first half for Matthews. Good now, man for man. Maslick trying to cover the big fella inside. Maslick at 6'9". Garcia, nice dish. And that's why Dwayne Davis is shooting 70% from the field this year. Well, the move to start Garcia tonight. Stroke of genius for Norm Sloan, replacing Jose Ramos, who's also a good guard, but Garcia has given them the spark. He's a little bit quicker, a little better offensively. Well, Matthews just pulled the string on that shot. He had a layup. And in the battle for the ball, no whistles, and Pitt comes out with it. Matthews inside, ball tip, and then a travel on Shorter. And that frenzied flurry. This Believe game is very heated, Ted. I, you know, it's a little bit physical. Both coaches bouncing around, a lot of intensity. There's Sean Miller back in for Pittsburgh. Brian Hogan is in for Florida. 
freshman guard, number 25, out of Kokomo, Indiana. There's your score and time remaining in the first half. And it's a travel on Hogan. Hogan, very popular freshman here from Kokomo, Indiana. Norm Strong says they boo me when I take them out. <laughs> but you know, the amazing thing about this Florida team is it is a Florida team. Nine of the 11 players on the roster this year from the state of Florida. That's an interesting statement about basketball. Well, McKinnon's from Norcross, Georgia, but he's really a Florida kid. So uh, he just moved across the line recently. Hogan, Hogan from Kokomo, the only real import. Sean Miller with a three, and again, you look up, and Pitt's only down six. Amazing. Well, they've really used the three to their advantage in this first half, but again, so is Florida, although Lett has slowed down now with that torrid streak, and there's Matthews going coast to coast, and he'll go to the line as he draws the blocking foul on Brian Hogan. Florida had three people in the paint that time. Nobody was ready to play defense. Watch now. There are enough white jerseys back there to stop this thrust. Matthew sees, hey, nobody's going to stop me. Matador defense. One, two, three guys. Just kind of make a little pass and say, ole, and let the bull go by. Are you ready for this? This young man has made 32 straight foul shots. Oh, I hate when announcers do that. I hate when... You gotta say it. You gotta say it. Which is 17 a game thus far this year, and he's now at 34 in a row from the foul line, and he has 17 in this first half. Ned Robinson, you guys got I would I would be afraid to fix it guy. Good call. Here's Jose Ramos. Number 10. He's been a starter most of the early going for Florida. First action tonight. Chapman back in the game. Down low to Davis, and he missed the layup. And then on the baseline, they'll be saying it's out off Davis, and Pittsburgh gets it back. Now with 4.22 to go in the half, this is just a four-point ball game. Boy, and it pits man for man has been very, very instrumental in this turnaround. And you look at the people on the floor, Mazik versus Shinsis, come on. Uh, but they're doing it. Brooklyn has made his presence felt. Uh, I'm not sure how Pitt has done it. Three-point shot, obviously. But they've also toughened on the defensive end. John Miller. Jason Matthews has what's screening. Trying to get it to shorter down low, and it's out of bounds off floor. Florida having to stay on defense a little longer now. Pitt has settled down. And we have a good ball game going here in Gainesville. 3.57 to go in the first half, and it's Florida by four. This USA Fitness Tip is brought to you by NyQuil, the nighttime colds medicine. It's generally agreed that no supplement to the diet of a person who is already on a well-balanced diet will improve his or her performance. If you're an average athlete, there's no diet plan on earth that will magically turn you into a champion. The key to maximum performance is a proper, well-balanced diet. And remember, practice and more practice, not dietary supplements, can turn you into a champion. I'm Jack Gibbons. <laughs> <laughs> Big Snipe, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, so you can have a silent night. prepare to enter the Big East Conference season. First half highlights, stats, out-of-town scores, and the Wall Street Journal report. All that coming up at halftime tonight. And he will reveal how he has never lost two games in a row while coaching this game. Pittsburgh now down four, and they throw it away. Shinsis inside. Hits on a 14 to two run. Florida led by 15 four minutes ago. Now they get it back into Shinsis, his first points in a while. What control? Took the lead pass, stopped, went up straight, squared. Sensational release. We watched in the shoot around today at the NBA three point line. He just drills them consistently. 
Good drive and dish by Sean Miller to Brian Shorter. Miller needs to do more of that, that penetration with the dribble. Draws the crowd to him, and we've already seen what he could do on Johnny Carson's show in terms of handling that ball and getting it to the open man. Hey, look at Brickett. Wow, he must have stayed off training table tonight. <laughs> yeah, that was some quickness there. Well, the ploy again. Norm Sloan started Garcia, paid off, and uh, Paul Evans kept Brooklyn on the bench and brought him in as a substitute, and it has paid off. And Look another steal. He's going to tie the game here. And he'll have a chance at the line as Ramos fouls him. And all of a sudden, with 2.47 to go on the half, Rod Brooklyn will be shooting to tie this game. To Paul Evans, that's what he's telling his team. Hey, guys, we were out of this thing a minute ago, and we fought and we hang in there. We're in the game. Well, Ramos came in. Uh, it did not go well for him. A couple of turnovers. He's out. Garcia back in. Armstrong dealing with some very, very young, talented guards. Ramos, a freshman, uh, just uh, lost his confidence. Now he, he just went directly to the bench. Garcia is a sophomore and a little bigger. And the funny thing is, Bucky, coming into this game, Garcia, who had not played as much, had the rather unenvious number of three turnovers for every one assist. And that's for a point guard is, you can't live with. Sometimes it's coming off the bench. It's amazing how some guys are not good reserves and play well as starters and vice versa. That's what you play in December for. Get the role solidified. Six points now for Garcia. Florida leads by three as we go under two and a half minutes in this first half. A high scoring half. Bunt teams now in man-for-man -man defense. Brooken and Matthews slashing through the lane. Picks up the rebound. Maslek hammers his way in, and Brian Shorter has the rebound. Brian Shorter. I mean, Lawrence Sloan really hot at his team there. No rebound. Well, I tell you, I'm impressed with Pitt. I, they have just battled back here and taken on what looked like an awesome, ready Gator team and uh, took a knockout punch and have come back twice. Oh. Inside. We had a foul on Pittsburgh. Shorter was trying to draw a foul inside. He didn't. Instead, they get Maslick for a foul. His first. There's Nate Bailey in for the first time. Junior, 6'6", transfer from Navy. Great play for Paul Evans as a freshman. Look at that halftime score. In Baton Rouge, Oklahoma. For Arkansas Little Rock and Mike Newell's team at halftime. The trunks on fences. Uh, I was going to say, who, who could fit into those? I don't know who his tailor is, but he loves to leave a lot of room. I mean, they, they would be uh, right to the ankles on a lot of folks. On our uh, USA primetime wrestling show, I think Gorilla Monsoon might be have been able to wrestle in those at one time. Huh? Here's Miller. Nice dish and drive again to Brian Shorter. 12 points. Dick Paparo is warning both teams to let the ball go through the hoop. It's 48-47 Florida at a minute 32 to go in the half. Watch Sean Miller now. Penetrating, breaking down the defense right by Garcia on the dribble. Under control, draws the defense. And this is the problem right here. Not that he slammed it, but he caught the ball through and shoved it along the baseline. That's a ploy teams like to use when they want to set up their press. But here comes the pit press so far. Pitt has come out of their press. This is the first time they've shown it for quite a while, despite the fact that they've been scoring. Pitt down one, a lot of guts. And they really took advantage of Davis's desire to block shots there. As soon as Miller got in near that paint, Davis went up in the air. That's why they're able to get shorter for the layup. Here's Nate Bailey with a foul. Bailey was a starter early, tough kid. Paul Evans likes him. You know, Paul Evans was a 6-2 forward at Ithaca College. Stress defense, rebounding, and when they say that, it probably meant he couldn't shoot. <laughs> but he's a heck of a coach. A career that spawned St. Lawrence, the Naval Academy, had only two losing seasons. Early at the Naval Academy, uh, he was around 500 but under. 
and except for that, he's been a winner. And just had two sensational years in the Big East, tying two years ago an undisputed champion last year. Now he's going to get a test as Bobby Martins is back in for Pitt. He gets a test right after, actually they go to Tucson next, Pittsburgh does, and they may play Arizona there in the Fiesta Bowl tournament. They open up the Big East at Syracuse, get one home game, then play at Georgetown, and then get Oklahoma. That's a nice New Year's gift. Yes. He'll, uh, he'll have an extra tall one thinking about that. Three-point game for Florida. 1.15 in the half. Here's Sean Miller. Nate Daly. Shot clock has not been a factor in this half. Matthews to tie the game. Short. Well, that rattle off Chapman's jaw is picked up by Garcia. Under a minute without Chinsis. The Gators now got to go to a perimeter game. Nice pass. Chapman Davis caught under the basket, finds his way out. How'd you like that call, Ted? They went right to their perimeter game. Nice penetration, <laughs> dumped down. Again, though, we make the point. The entire front line of Florida are excellent passers. They have a real knack for finding each other. Well, Pitt going to go for the last shot. Shot clock off. That's the game clock. I look for uh, Miller to penetrate and take what the defense gives him. Matthews is going to go set down in three-point range. Bailey playing tight by Chapman. They give Miller the three. He takes a two. And that will end the half. Miller got caught a little bit off balance, so he had to take a step inside the arc and missed it. And the half ends, Florida with the lead, but Pittsburgh can't feel bad. They were getting blown out. They were down 15, clawing their way back, and they're down five. 52-47, Florida at the half. Florida leading 52-47 over Pittsburgh at halftime. The Panthers are the defending Big East regular season champs, but the glory of last year in many ways is just a memory. Last year, a national television audience saw Pittsburgh's front line dominate Florida. Charles Smith had 30 points, Jerome Lane 21 rebounds. But Smith and Lane are in the pros, so Paul Evans has to rebuild. Bucky spoke to him yesterday. Coach Paul Evans, you're four and three. Not really worried about Big East prestige right now, trying to get a young club going. Right, I don't think we're real concerned about the Big East against the Southeast Conference, other than, you know, we like to perform well, but we'd like to do that because we're Pittsburgh and we'd like to get better. Um, we haven't played particularly well defensively in particular, and we haven't done a lot of things. We haven't had a lot of good consistency, and we're just trying now that the exams are over to spend this week with some positive efforts towards basketball. You won the Big East Championship last year. How do you rate the league this year? Well, I, I think it's a lot stronger this year. I think you've got uh, great recruiting classes with the top four or five teams, plus no one lost a whole lot except for Pittsburgh. So I, I think from top to bottom, it, it's a little bit stronger than it was a year ago. And I think you look at Georgetown, Syracuse, you know, they may rate right up there one, two, three in the country, uh, Georgetown in particular. You have no seniors on this team. Jerome Lame obviously going into the NBA early. You lost two first round draft choices and an awesome front line. What is the day to day now in rebuilding your program? Well, it, it's been tough. You know, the defense, I think it's been a big thing. Offensively, Bobby and Brian have both scored pretty well. In fact, I think the scoring statistics are close to what Jerome and Charlie did. Uh, but they don't make the big plays at this point. They, they, they make a poor pass or poor decisions at different times, and they're not consistent. Uh, we've given up 20 offensive rebounds in two of our losses that directly contributed to those losses. So uh, we've got to get better position, we've got to block out, and we've got to concentrate on the basics a little bit more than they're doing. And if there is one player who can be the catalyst for you getting ready for Big East play, who will that be? Well, I think there's a couple of them. Probably Rod Brooken uh, hasn't given us what he's capable of, and I, I think he's capable of maybe a 20-point average and, and igniting us. And if that would happen, I, I think that would make it a whole lot easier on the rest of them. And then the other one uh, is Brian Shorter. Uh, he's done very well to this point 
considering he sat out last year, uh, and you look at some of the other kids that sat out, they really don't have that good a year the first year out. And if he could come into his own and play the way he's capable of, that could give us a big lift as well. I think, Bucky, interesting comments from Paul Evans, and he had to be happy with what he saw from Rod Brooken in the first half once he got in the game. Well, absolutely. Bench scoring in the first half. Florida zip, hit 13, and the ploy of not starting Brooken, he came in and had eight of those, uh, uh, 13, actually, 13 to zip. He had eight of those points, and that was that ignition that he was looking for, that and three-point shooting. It was awesome in the first half. And Norm Sloan worried about his guard play, had to be happy. His starting backcourt, no turnovers in the first half. We'll come back with highlights and stats in Gainesville in a moment. High scoring first half, Florida leading 52-47 over Pittsburgh. Look at the leading scorers for Pittsburgh in the first half. Jason Matthews hit his season average of 17 a game in the first half. He had three threes early, shorter with 12, and Brooken with eight key points off the bench. Matthews three for four from four point, or from three point land. Taking advantage now, excellent penetration here. Good move inside, and uh, that was uh, Brian Shorter to take beneficiary of Sean Miller's dish off. It was not Matthews. Looking at Florida with the ball now. Coming in off the bench, Ramos with a steal there by Brooken. This was the ignition that Paul Evans was looking for. The pit bench scoring 13 points to none from the rail for the Gators. And eight of those came from that guy right there. 30 pounds overweight and all. He picked up two quick steals and it really did turn the Panthers around. Clifford Lett hit an incredible hot streak in the middle of the half. Four three-pointers, 20 in the first half. Dwayne Shinsis, almost a quiet 14 to go with five rebounds and five assists. Chapman did not have the big first half. He was one for four. And that one was the beneficiary from an excellent pass from Dwayne Shinsis. Shinsis, the 7-2 center, had five assists, only one turnover. Your basic ball handling seven foot point guard. There he is. A little bit of a charge there, not much. 7'2, 270 pounds in motion, but with a soft touch. Chintz has had 14 points. More importantly, his passing, I think, helped to break down the pit press. All right, tonight's first half statistics brought to you by the Prudential going above and beyond to meet your needs in insurance and other financial services. Excellent shooting. Field goal percentage is about even from the three-point line. Both teams outstanding. And uh, you wonder if they're ever going to cool off. Free throws, everybody's shooting the ball well. Florida, not surprisingly, with a rebound advantage. And the turnover situation, as you pointed out, none of them came from their starting guards, which was a real breakthrough in terms of settling this team down. Points off of transition, uh, off the turnovers. Florida with 20, Pitt 12. Pitt did not have many fast breaks. They were basically a half-court team despite scoring 47 points. And the only thing that really got them going in transition were the steals by Brooklyn. Florida, on the other hand, when Pitt started the game throwing up a lot of shots quickly, got their running game in gear, and it looked like they were going to run the Panthers right to Orlando or maybe further. You know, Bucky, this is kind of an unusual first half. Both coaches may look at it, and there's not a whole lot they can be unhappy with. Except the defense. I don't think anybody wants to look up there and see 52 points against you. And uh, But isn't that the way the game is today? Well, yeah, but I think, <laughs> I don't think even with the three-point shots, I don't think a lot of coaches have really accepted the fact that they can give up 100 points and still be respected defensively. That, that will have to come. All right, good matchups next week on USA's College Basketball Wednesday night in Columbia, Missouri, Arkansas, and Missouri. And then next Thursday, I'll be in Knoxville for what should be a beauty. Only the second time Memphis State and Tennessee have ever played. We'll see it 9 o'clock Eastern both nights here on USA. I still think Norm Stewart at Missouri has a Final Four potential team. I really like that ball club. Pittsburgh with the ball, Martin in the lane, around Shinsis missing, and Davis the rebound. Shinsis has two fouls. Shorter and Porter have two apiece for Pittsburgh, so nobody with three fouls in the game yet. Let's see if the Gators go right back to let at 20 at the first half. His career high is 22. 
Sean Miller. Jason Matthews. All right, it's Darrell Porter missing, and Shinsis with a rebound. Porter didn't play much in that first half once Brooken came in. Porter starts the second half guarding Chapman. And there's the Shinsis lob. Another one rolls off the rim and shorter the rebound. They've gotten it inside, though, their first two trips down the floor for good shots. I like to see a little more power play from the big guy when he gets them down inside. That, that was a little soft. He has a tremendous advantage. I think a part of that, Ted, is his concern for fouls. He does not want to get in foul trouble, and he's carrying two personal fouls right now. Norm Sloan told him just that. Take it to the hoop, get fouled. Go okay. to the line. What that does is it puts the other team's front line in deep foul trouble if you take it to the basket. Shooting fall away jumpers is not the way to accomplish that. Bobby Martin got caught in the bad spot there, picks up his first foul. First team foul, and a nice block inside again by Matthews, saving the hoop. The big fella, again, passing over everybody, wide open underneath. Great defensive effort that time. Jason Matthews, 6'3", but he can leap. A lot of knee banging out there. The defensive intensity is pretty darn good. It wasn't at the start of the game. Chapman, a brick, got his own rebound, lost it, has it a third time, and is hammered and fouled by Martin. That's his first personal foul. But that's the kind of power move inside that pays off in the last 10 minutes of the game when the other team is deep into their bench because you've attacked the basket and drawn some fouls. It may not be as pretty as those short little jumpers, but they take their toll. We're getting close to that point that Paul Evans hated so much. He mentioned in Bucky at halftime, 20 offensive rebounds by the opponents in the last two losses. And Florida already has 11 offensive rebounds. Chapman though missing two foul shots. Here's Porter back, Florida by five. Matthews. Right hand tip off the glass goes down by Brian Shorter, who has 14 now. He's kind of waging a one-man battle in there for Pitt. Well, the concern for rebounding is what made Paul Evans uneasy is this is a better rebounding front line than he's really faced uh, when he was concerned about giving up so many offensive boards. Uh, Garcia with a bad pass. Porter to steal. Porter gives it right back. Clifford Lett runs it down. Throws the strike to Davis. But he holds it up. There were two gifts that time. Nice pass, Davis. He just kind of left it up there in the air and let Shinsis catch it and put it home. 16 for Shinsis. It was pretty safe to leave it up there. There was only one guy in the gym that could reach it. That was kind of like a setup in volleyball. Yeah. Five-point Florida lead. Two and a half minutes gone, second half. They go inside to Shinsis again. They, just, they ought to just go to him every time down the floor. Pittsburgh has not been able to stop the entry pass at all tonight. And if they collapse, he surely is an adept passer. He's going to find the open man. That time his move was to the basket, which is what Sloan wants. He wants him going to the hoop. That's what Shorter's doing for Pitt. That shot doesn't go, and Davis has the rebound. Pitt's getting very few second chances. Well, they're trying to tempt Shinsis into that third foul, too. Whoa. Dwayne Davis, the layup. Now, the Florida passing. Boy, Davis, good thing he caught that. It would have bounced off his spine. <laughs> that was about an eight-foot pass at about 90 miles an hour. That wasn't a catch. It was self-defense. And now it's a nine-point lead that Florida has quickly opened up here. Nice pass. Boy, good passing with both teams inside. And Bobby Martin gets the hoop off the assist by Shorter. 58-51, Florida. Left his first shot in quite a while. Shins is banging off the glass, but it comes to Sean Miller. Three on three. Matthews. Basket counts at a foul. Again, Florida had three bodies back in the paint. But they really weren't ready to play defense. And Pitt assertively just took it to the basket. 
so far. This one goes off the rim. Schitt just gets it off the board, but Sean Miller is running. It's really three on three. Matthews, Ely, down the baseline, under control, edges back to kiss it off the glass. Sloan's gonna have a lot to talk about in practice about not just getting back against a team that's running, but being ready to stop the ball. You gotta talk, you gotta point out people, you gotta communicate. Miss foul shot, and after a miscue, Florida comes away with it. Maslek is in the game along with Brooklyn, both back in for Pittsburgh. Porter is out, and Martin is out. And while Florida starters continue to go, they got an offensive foul on Lutz, and that's three now on Clifford Lutz. Foul so three on Lett, two on the team, timeout with 15.52 to play. And the halftime lead is intact, Florida by five. We go above and beyond just like you. Above and beyond what we have to do. Caring for what's special to you. I'm a prudential representative. When I speak to people about car insurance, I offer them an exclusive pre review to get them the best coverage possible. Taking care of protect what's important to you. The Rock, the Prudential, above and beyond. Sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, so you can have a silent night medicine. Wednesday, Dynamite Doug Smith and the Missouri Tigers try to defuse the running Razorbacks of Arkansas. Thursday, Elliot Perry, the Metro Freshman of the Year, loads up for a showdown with the top gun in the SEC when Memphis State meets Tennessee. College basketball on USA. Next Wednesday and Thursday, starting at 9. They can. I can't. You have to. I can't. You have to. I can't. Solve crime. You solve it. Diamonds on USA. Sunday at 9, 8 Central. Fifteen fifty-two to go here in Gainesville. Florida leading by five. You notice how I didn't mention it, Bucky, but uh, just a moment ago, Jason Matthews missed a foul shot, breaking his string 34 in a row. A tie to team record that Sean Miller had set last year. Well, that's something you had to do. That's news. But tempting those guys when they're in the streaks, I just don't have guts enough to do that. You wouldn't call a no-hitter, huh? <laughs> no. But I will say shank on the golf course. I'm very <laughs> familiar with that. When your $5 Nassau's on the line, right? That's right. Rod Brooklyn with 10 points now, and it's a three-point lead quickly down to Chapman. And Brooklyn comes away with it. Here's Sean Miller. This is to tie the game. Matthews missing it. And it's going to be out of bounds. And Florida's ball. Right in front of the Pittsburgh bench. Paul Evans can't believe it. Now the officials confirm. Larry Rose is saying Florida ball. He was closest man to it. And that's what the ruling will be. He won't convince Paul Evans. I thought Matzak pushed off a little bit too. Here's a shot. It goes long off the iron. Oh, definitely oh. off of Shinsis. Yeah, no, no question. Never touched Matzak. Shinsis is looking for a push-off. Matzak gave him a little, just a little nudge. How can a guy that big even feel it? Shinsis got caught a little bit there. Balance was off. Matzak's not pretty, but he's giving him good play off the bench. And that's why he's in back in this game so early in the second half. He's done a better job than Martin has against Shinsis. Meanwhile, Shorter has 16, and it's a one-point game. Well, Matzak's just bellying up to him, leaning on the big guy. Martin, of course, is a finesse player, trying to use his quickness to deny those passes. Livingston Chapman only a second basket, eight points. Good battle here with 14 oh, yeah. and a half to play. We've got a good game, Ted. Sean Miller played this almost the entire game at point guard for Pitt without a turnover. One of the great 
stats of the year in the Pittsburgh book. You say Miller committed only six moving violations all last year. Good oh, player. Rod Brooken on the line for two. But this might be the breakout game that they were looking for from him. Well, he's been impressive. He's got a good match up there in Chapman. Garcia called for the offensive foul. That's his first third team, and Pitt will have a chance to take the lead, which they have not had since the early moments of the game. Brian Hogan back in the game for Garcia. Yet another freshman. Rebounding edge. Not as dominant as it would seem. If you were to guess watching this game, you'd think it was probably more one side. And right now, the score is what matters, and Pittsburgh is going to have a chance to take the lead. A foul here on Davis. That's his second, and quickly 14 fouls now on the Gators. Brian Shorter, double zero down inside, really shapes up well. Presents a good target. Forced Davis that time to fight over the top. They're hoping Shorter can replace Jerome Lane. They feel offensively he's superior, but it's pretty hard to put someone in the rebounding category with Jerome Lane at this point in his career. Jason Matthew, whoa! Shinsis goes down hard, but he'll get up quickly. With some seismographs across the country. That registered on the Richter. Oh, about eight. Oh, I'll tell you what, for a guy that's been, oh, <laughs> boom, oh. <laughs> but do you, want the, like the out? do you want the big guy out doing no, that? No, indeed. I mean, he's been so good about keeping his feet around the basket. Why he went out flail on that a jump shooter, I don't know. Oh. Three fouls now on Shinsis, five on Florida. Not a smart play. Play. Not a smart play, Chris. Let's see how it affects him now that he has that third. Matthews, three-pointer, that was not a good shot. And falling to the court, Hogan, he's called for traveling. A lot of fans still don't understand that interpretation in college ball. If you're going down, you have to let go of the ball. You better start dribbling. Pitt can take the lead. Amazing how they've done this. It's their third chance to take the lead, and Brooken does it. A two-pointer that gives Pittsburgh the lead for the first time since the score was in single digits. Five to four was the last time Pitt led. We have a foul here. And Sean Miller, his second, <laughs> third team. He and Lenny Wurz an eyeball to eyeball, and finally Sean said, yeah, I got it. So, 12.59 to play. This has not been the dominant home court that I'm sure Florida would like it to be tonight. Hogan hits the three, and he's fouled. Two fouls in a row by Sean Miller. He ran right through the shooter that time. Three on Miller, four on the team, and Hogan, the fan favorite, has a chance at a four-point play. Looks like a freshman, too. It actually looks like a high school sophomore, doesn't yeah. it? A.B. Co face. Kokomo, Indiana played very well in the Kentucky, Indiana All-Star Games, and those, my friend, are fresher for young people. Never mind Pitt and Florida. For a high school kid, that's the ultimate pressure cooker. Matthews, big steps down the lane. Ball rolls off the rim and a foul. That four-point play by Hogan were the first points off the Florida bench tonight. Meanwhile, here, Shinsis has picked up his fourth foul with 12.26 to play in the game. And let's see if there is a foul. Good screen that time. Boy, Matthews slicing down. Wow. 
If he got him, that's just that's a tough. Yeah, it, it, when you're seven footer fouls, you, you want it to be, you know, just the kind where they, they get up, shake their head, wipe the tears out of their eyes, and have to shoot free throws. That was just a touch me not foul. And then looking back at that one where he dove way out there at a three point shooter, that's, that's the, the one that got him in trouble. Exactly. Well, Matthews, after making 34 in a row, has missed two in a row. But the big story here is that Dwayne Shensis is sitting with 12.26 to play and Florida leading by three. 18 points, five assists, Shensis takes to the bench. Matthews now off on a new streak. Here's the pit press again. Michael Kerr in the game to replace Shensis for Florida. Sean Miller, number three, has to be careful. He has three fouls. Well, he reached in at that ball, too, as Chapman drove across the lane. And I'll get Maslek for a foul here. Maslek's been a force inside. He's not a, he's not a particularly good leaper or a talented player, but at 6'9", he's been banging around in there, doing a good job for the Panthers. Now, Bobby Martin will check back in to replace Maslin. And with Shinsis out, of course, now Martin may have a little more ability to use his finesse inside. Paul Evans has not been concerned about Martin playing center offensively. It's defensively against the major big men. So we could see Pitt go to him inside. Without Shinsis, this is not a big basketball team that Florida has on the floor. Woodford left nails the three. His fifth of the game, he has 23 points. A career high. And if he gets hot like he did in the first half, he could blow this game open at 20 at the half. Florida by five. Jason Matthews got the roll, and he has 22. First team all Big East freshman performer. Oh, he just peeled off Brooklyn that time, Ted. Power move right to the middle. That's where those, that's where the extra pounds hurt you defensively in reaction time. It's all right when you know what you're going to do with the ball, but when you're trying to make the adjustment, that's where it nails you. Nice entry pass. Oh, and look at Martin go up for the slam. Oh, I thought he was on the I thought that ball was in a cylinder, too. So did Norm Sloan. <laughs> I got up. I thought that ball was hanging in there, and he jammed it back in. And Norm's giving Dick Paparo an earful. Three-point game again. Hogan missing a three. Oh, Lett went way up for that rebound, but he came down and took a step. He's taking a few more and very unhappy. Norm Sloan wants a timeout. Trying to move into the top 10 of active winning coaches, of coaches of all time, and he is hot. He needs one more win to be in the top 10, and he's fighting for his life. Florida by three. What do you think? Oregon State, Ralph Miller in his last year as a coach. Sloan, of course, will go two more years, so he should pass him and move up into eighth spot. It's off Brian Shorter's hands out of bounds. Of course, this very reminiscent of the games we had at the Tournament of Champions when Arizona lost Sean Elliott to fouls in their game with North Carolina. The key for Florida now is to maintain. They've now played two minutes without Shinsis, and it's the same. Shinsis left, Florida up three, and they're still up three. Inside Davis, offensive foul, no basket. Three fouls on Davis. Oh, the quickness of Martin that time. Bobby Martin, a 6'9 sophomore from Atlantic City, used those quick feet to get over and seal the defense. This is the way the rotating defense is supposed to work. Watch 55. I'm not sure he got there. It was close. Tough call. Three on Dwayne Davis, and here's Pitt back down by three. That's the kind when you get it on the road. It's, uh, yeah, you look up to the heavens. Oh, nice weak side there. Brian Hogan came over to knock that ball away and create the turnover. Boy, so far he's been a pillar of strength. He's handled the ball off the bench. Some good steals and a bucket. 
just think this is a Florida team that's used three freshmen as point guards in this game. There's a bad pass by Kerr and Brooken with a steal. This is the problem Norm Sloan has with depth. I don't think he'd like to play Kerr very much tonight, but he doesn't have a whole lot of choice with Shinsis out. He really has no other big people on the bench. Right, Bobby Martin went a long way on that pivot. And it's out of bounds off Brooken. The pit offense standing still. They got the ball at the top of the key with Martin, which is a marvelous entry area. And then everything seemed to stand still. The continuity broke down. Now Norm Sloan's going to go to three guards, but he takes Kerr out and he brings in Garcia to go with a very small lineup. Actually, the pit club on the floor is not that big either, but that does give Florida the advantage with a little more quickness. And they've had trouble against this really tough man for man from Pitt. Cavanaugh with a foul. His first 16 fouls on Pittsburgh. And so now with 9.08 to play, every foul the rest of the way will be shot by both clubs. And Sean Miller right back in to replace Cavanaugh. 69-66 Florida. And they've now survived over three minutes with Shinsis out. Inside Davis. Tough angle and he got it. Ten for Dwayne Davis. There is a good side to not having a seven-footer in there. If you're Chapman and Davis, there's more room to operate. Hogan called for the block. The very popular Brian Hogan, the freshman. I didn't think he had position. Of course, what he's saying, Matthews had that lead arm out. Yep. And again, that's another call that if you get on the road. The great uh, <laughs> Dick Paparo. The great arbitrator, Dick Paparo, trying to soothe it with some conversation. Errol Porter back in the game. Sophomore, 6-4. The defensive stopper. Well, they sit Brooken out at 8.45 to play. Jason Matthews gets the first shot down, and here comes Shinsis back in. So they played three minutes and 45 seconds with Shinsis out on the four fouls, and Florida stays even if Matthews makes his foul shot. That's a good sign. 71-68 Florida. Oh, Garcia almost had a strip. Keeps it, and here's a break. Three on two. Let. Like he was a little bit late giving that ball up, and they get a foul on Pitt. That really didn't have control down through there. That, that last dribble, Ted, was up under his chin. They get Shorter on the foul, his third. I thought Shorter made a good move. He didn't try to go for the block. He held his ground. I, uh, I thought he had at least a 50-50 to draw the charge. Let got a break on that one. So here's Chapman. Had trouble at the line. Four out of six tonight. He's 58% on the year. Nice high rotation. Chapman tapes a lot of games, professional games, and tries to imitate moves of some of his favorite players, small forwards in the NBA that he watches off videotape. Another change in ears. Check to the floor, and the held ball call. Possession arrow gives it to Florida. Nobody's happy right now. Well, I don't understand that one either, quite frankly. Well, that was like a demolition derby. There should have been some whistle somewhere. And Shinsa said Chapman there couldn't get the ball to him. Garcia picks it up. And Davis goes over everybody's back to tip that in and will pick up his fourth. Wow. <laughs> that one he earned. He earned that foul. Davis looks like the lead boulder in an avalanche. I mean, he could care less if bodies were in front of him. He sent some people sprawling. 
What a stud. Shins has lost his cool a little bit out there. Finally got it. Got off the fingertips. Now watch number 50. Wayne Davis in the white come from the back. I see the ball. I don't see anything else. Get out of my way. And Jason Matthews keeps going to the line. Sinking foul shots. See the night he's having. 26 now. 8-16 to play in the game. And it's a two-point Florida lead. Garcia against Miller. Bobby Martin trying to front Shinsis. Shinsis with four fouls. And finally Chapman mugged as he goes baseline. I'll get Darrell Porter on the foul. Boy, Chapman just attacked the defense that time. Just drove it right to him. I'll tell you what's significant in terms of statistics. In the first half, the three-point shooting was awesome. Pitt was six for ten. Florida four for six. There's almost no three-point shooting here in the second half. Both teams have really buttoned down, playing tough man-for-man -man defense, and they're contesting that perimeter shot. A lot of foul shots in this half yep. for Pittsburgh. Not too many yet for Florida, but the Panthers have had a good number. Every shooter's had his tonsils checked. It's been very aggressive defensively out there. Oh, boy, Pitt, Pitt just escaped there. That extra bounce on that rim almost cost them. And here they are with Matthews inside, smothered and stuck by Chapman, and no whistle, which gets the pit bench up. And now they're going to get Porter. No, oh, they say it's out of bounds off Chapman. What a Look gutty call smart. that is in front of the Florida bench. Norm Sloan looked like, face, looked like he had jumper cables on. Did you see that? His face is going to match that Christmas tie he's got on in a minute. Now there's a guy. There's a guy in his early 60s doing aerobics. Timeout at 7:40 to play in the game. Set for on USA Saturday Nightmares. Here's the play. It really did look like a foul. Papero from the back says, no, no, Pitt going the other way, and look at Norman Sloan. Meanwhile, at the other end, a tip-in by Shorter, I believe, ties the game. It is Shorter. Miller stumbles, so Garcia back a little bit out of control, and he draws a foul, and Garcia goes down. There's a situation again where Pitt had people back, but they really didn't dig in, talk, all they had to do was stand their ground. Garcia was out of control. Looks like he may have an injured an arm. Fourth foul on Darrell Porter, Pittsburgh. And it's his right hand they're looking at as we take a look at scores elsewhere. Is that a win, though, for Illinois to go into Baton Rouge and beat LSU like that? Boy, Henson's great athletes. When they are great, they are great. They put a whooping on this Florida club, but that was in Champaign. That was awesome. That was 30 and change. Oklahoma, another home win. North Carolina with a blowout. Looking at their 59th straight week in the top 10. Well, Jim Valvano, your old Wolfpack there have been kind of feasting on some of the unknowns of the world. Georgia opens the <laughs> SEC with a win. Are you trying to say Valvado's visiting team stay in kennels Ooh, and, man. and uh, not hotels? Well, Ronaldo Garcia is going to go off for a little further examination. And the substitute, shooting Brian Hogan, will shoot the foul shots. Hogan. Hogan just happens uh, to be a, a five for seven for the year, 71% shooter. And Garcia falling heavily on that left hand and wrist, as you can see in the replay. So Hogan, the substitute, shooting the fouls. He makes them both. He's the only bench player to score for Florida in the game. And with 7.15 to play, Florida leads by two. Miller. Three-pointer by Sean Miller, and that gets Pittsburgh the lead. How about Sean Miller? He has now made 16 three-point baskets this year, only eight two-point baskets. That's the first of the half, however, for Pitt. They were six for 10 in the first half from the three-point line, only one for three in the second half, and that goes back to the point we were making. 
the perimeter defense considerably tougher in the second half. And now Pitt with the ball, the one point late after the Shinsis miss. And it's shorter inside, traveling. Impressive though, Ted. Wayne Shinsis came across hard from the weak side and made a real serious effort to reject that ball, even though he has four. Both teams run from similar sets. Florida doesn't do much screening off of theirs. They do more of a passing game, a lot of motion. Pitt, on the other hand, does lots more screening down inside, which is more typical of an Eastern team. Just amazing to watch Florida, though, with Garcia out now. And here's Brian Hogan, a little used freshman as the point guard. Shinsis didn't come to meet the pass. He was out quick. And Jason Matthews filling it at the other end, 28. And Pitt leads by three. It is their biggest lead of the game. Six minutes to play. And a freshman with the ball in the backcourt. Brook and Lake going for the steal. Chapman the basket. Boy, he is an amazing arc on his shot. Norm will tell you he has three-point range, but they got some other guys they prefer to see take that three-point shot. But that was a big one. Pitt was sneaking right out of here. Posted up against Davis, who has four fouls and has to be careful. And Shorter now has 20 points. Florida's not putting any pressure on the perimeter now, and they're able to run their offense. And Pitts running some nice stuff down inside. Oh, Look at freshman this. made a pa an errant pass there. Hogan telegraphed that, and Brooken was able to cut in for the steal. But as good as the Florida front line is, they're not coming to meet the pass. And right now, Pitt is going into a kamikaze approach defensively. They're trying to steal every pass. They don't want Florida to dig in, and they're gambling. There's Davis, he really muscled shorter out of the way there, and Davis gets the slam. Weak side defense on sabbatical. Either that, or they thought better of getting in front of him. And let's see if Pitt keeps going inside, Bucky, because Davis and Shinsis both have four fouls, and they're not playing as aggressively in there. They're looking down to shorter. They haven't really gone to Martin down low at all. Not a bad move, go to Martin. Shinsis has four. 425 left, hit by three, and away from the ball. You've got Martin with a foul, away from the ball. His third. And so Shinsis will shoot a one and one at the other end. And now Martin sits, replaced by Steve Maslick. Shinsis only a 58% free throw shooter, despite that remarkable touch. Martin down just four points tonight, and it will be Livingston Chapman, not Shinsis. I thought that Martin had fouled Shinsis, but it is Chapman. I wonder if he snuck in there and just ran to that line and took the ball. What do you think? Nah, they wouldn't do that. Not this close to Christmas. <laughs> well, he's percentage-wise, he's no better foul shooter than Shinsis. Pretty hard to pull out on Popero. He's, uh, yeah. he's a man to be pretty tough to con. But you've seen it done quite a bit. You watch games through the years. Yep. Two-point lead for Pitt. They have the ball at 420 to play. Chapman with 14 tonight. Maslin screening high for Miller. And Miller's going in. Shovel to Jason Matthews. The tip by Shorter. Boy, that Florida front line with those four fouls has really disappeared, Bucky. Boy, four points in a four point, four minutes in a four point pit lead. Amazing performance by the Panthers. Oh, Chapman gets the hoop and Brooke in the foul. And all of a sudden, Chapman is the man Florida is going to. When you see what happens when the ball goes down inside, you, you know why Pitt has taken so many chances on the perimeter pass. Watch Hogan now, excellent feed. Bounce pass down inside, really freezes Brooken up over the top. Chapman with the good release and he's back on the line. One for two last time. And what is the second one that got iron? Shorter the rebound, Chapman has missed five foul shots in the second half. 
That looms large. Two-point pit lead. Florida only 61% coming in. Let tip that ball, and then we got a foul on Hogan. Both teams now not really coming to meet the pass. Most of these steals are not the fault of the passer, Ted, as much as they are that, that the receivers not being assertive. Is that the case, Bucky, of young teams trying to learn how to win, maybe trying to learn how to play close well, games? A little like timidity, yeah. I think you're great players at the end of a game. I mean, they break your arm to get to the ball. It's a little bit timid. Well, this is a guy that hadn't been in this position very often. Wow. In clutch game, clutch time in a game, shooting foul shots, and Maslick nails the first. He was one for two coming into the game for the season. Oh, he went over Hogan's back there, but knocks it out of bounds, and Florida will keep it. And we'll have a timeout at 3 minutes, 39 seconds, remaining in Gainesville. Pittsburgh leading Florida, 84 to 81. Pittsburgh by three with 3.39 remaining. Florida led by 15 at one point in the first half of this game. And tough battle for Norman Sloan tonight in his 37th year. The head basketball coach, 15 of them in two stints here at Florida. And he's trying to crack the coaching top 10 tonight. Well, if he doesn't do it tonight, the Gators go to the Holiday Festival, the ECAC Holiday Festival in Madison Square Garden, the 27th and the 29th. And good competition there. Ohio State, St. John's, Fordham, and the Gators. Let's see what Pittsburgh has done under Paul Evans. The last non-conference loss for Florida in this building was five years ago. Florida State won here at Gainesville. It's the last non-SEC team to win here. Well, it's an impressive road performance no matter what happens for Pitt. But as we pointed out, without the student body here, it is a little less intense for the visitor. <laughs> and that's out off Matthews. And you saw the reaction of Chapman. At 3.13 to play, Florida keeps the ball with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Lenny Wirtz. He's asking if the clock should be reset. And they'll leave it as is. For Dillette, looking down low, goes up from outside, rimming it out. Big rebound, Davis stripped when he came down, and that's the fourth foul on Sean Miller. Miller just slithering along that baseline, took a chance. Might not have been a bad foul except the fact that his fourth because Davis would have powered back up in there, maybe uh, had a chance to get a three-point play. Bucky, here's where Florida is going to have some trouble winning close games. There, As a team, they shoot just 62% from the line thus far this year. They miss a front end there, but Shinsis picks it up, and boy, he's wide left. Oh, what a that brick. No iron at all. Almost an air ball. So Pitt with the ball and a three-point lead. That's the game clock. Missed foul shots of Haunted Florida in the second half. And it's gonna be tough for them in a good SEC to win close games. They don't shoot free, free throws better than that. Now the guard play was improved tonight. They ran into a pit team that's tougher than expected. There's Shinsis with a spike. But, of course, that gives Pitt the ball because he swats it into the third row. It gives Pitt the ball with 45 seconds. Yep. Again, if you're Norm Sloan, you don't want this block to go out of bounds. You want it to go out there where the Gators can run. They had an excellent fast break in the first half. They just haven't been able to get it going. Pitt now can run the game clock under two minutes. They lead by three. Well, the strength of this Pitt team is the guard play and when you get from three minutes down the game should belong to the little people because you're either chasing it or you're keeping it and that's guard play so you push. have to feel even though they're on the road that Pitt has the advantage here with the experienced guards martin had just beaten a five count there ten to shoot now seven and matthew's the man they want with it big 
big drive with four on the shot clock. Jason Matthews has 30, and Pitt leads by five. What a player he's going to be. Again, all out for every pass. Shinsis has a gimme, and he missed it when he was hammered by Maslick. So Shinsis will have to earn him from the foul line. The defensive concept by Pitt is really interesting. They just don't want to see Florida run their stuff and go down inside. They're taking all kinds of chances on the perimeter, and it has paid off. We got a good one. Stay with us. In its entirety, you'll see Miami Vice on USA at the conclusion of our basketball game. In Gainesville, we have a minute and 25 seconds remaining. Pittsburgh leading 86 to 81. Shinsis to the line for Florida to shoot a one and one. And Florida has made just five out of 12 foul shots in the second half. Well, that kind of free throw shooting will kill you, but also the Pitt defense has been very, very impressive. They gave up 52 points in the first half, and at this point, with a minute 25 to go, they've given up only 34 points. That's an amazing differential. Also, Lett had 20 at the half. He has had only four shots in the second half, one three-pointer, so that indicates the shutdown by the Panther defense. Minute 15, Shinsis, 89% foul shooter in his career in the last three minutes of a game, and he missed one there. That's what it's been in the second half. But Florida has life. They rebound the miss. One minute as Lett brings it up. Shinsis dumping. Chapman drops it, and they get a foul inside. I'm not sure who it's on at 58 seconds. I think Ron Sloan, Brooken. Sorry, Ted, I think Sloan wanted Shinsis to, to make a move to the hoop that time. It, it was just not what you want your seven-footer doing, tight roping along the baseline, getting up in the air and trying to make a play. But when you get him the ball right there, he should be going to the basket to try to score, especially, as you pointed out, he's an excellent free throw shooter, especially at the end of a game. Brooken out now. Darrell Porter is in. And Chapman shooting a one and one 58 seconds. Porter in giving hit another ball handler. And Brooklyn has also had a lot of trouble from the foul line this year. It's going to be tough to press with the three guard attack in there now. All experienced, great athletes. Miss and the rebound tip to Porter. And remember also that neither Davis nor Shinsis can foul for Florida without leading the game. They both have four. Well, I think under a minute now, they're probably not concerned with that, but that free throw shooting has been horrendous. All right, Chapman picks up that foul, his second at 42 seconds remaining. Don't forget again, you'll be seeing Miami Vice in its entirety on USA immediately at the conclusion of our basketball game. 42 seconds now, and Darrell Porter, a 67% foul shooter this season at the line for Pitt. Paul Evans, only the 11th basketball coach at the University of Pittsburgh, and he wants to talk about it with 42 seconds to go. Pittsburgh leading by three. Ted Robinson, Bucky Waters back in Gainesville, Florida. Pittsburgh trying to host an impressive road non-conference win here. They lead by three with 42 seconds left. Darrell Porter will shoot a one and one. And a benevolent Florida team at Christmas time. Seven for 16 from the foul line in the second half. Surely aided the visiting Panthers. Calmly, Porter sinks the foul shot. Three points tonight. The big giver, we can call him that, from the foul line for Florida has been Chapman. He has missed six foul shots. He's three for nine in the second half from the foul line. And Porter calmly sinks both, so it's a five-point game. Florida has not been a good three-point shooting team this year, just 27%. Led has had a hot first half, only one for four in the second half. That's the one he wanted. He got the shot, and Davis gets the rebound and a timeout called by Florida. Pittsburgh went up after that ball. Kind of lucky they didn't get called for a foul there. Davis, the hoop, 14 points, and a Florida timeout.
with 26 seconds remaining. Well, don't forget, folks, we have a special new brand of college basketball coming up on USA Sunday night, game of the week, starting it right after the first of the year. Bucky and I will be in Corvallis, Oregon. We kick it off with a Pac-10 battle at 7 Eastern time on January 8th, UCLA and Oregon State. Missouri Valley Conference, Bradley and Illinois State. And how about that one from the West Coast Athletic Conference, Loyola Marymount Pepperdine. That's a track meet, isn't it? Nah. But they shoot well at the end of it. And into February, you will see Jeff Mullins and a very good UNC Charlotte team against John Shoemate in his first year at SMU. Rhode Island in Houston on February 12th. Kansas State and Wichita State. You talk about a little rivalry there on the 19th. That one may be a big game in the Atlantic 10 regular season race. West Virginia and Temple on the 26th of February. Texas and SMU. And we wrap it up on March 5th. Back to the Big West. And we see the Running Rebels at New Mexico State. Sunday night, college basketball. Every Sunday night except for Super Bowl Sunday on USA. Contrasting Florida 7 for 16 in the second half in the foul line. That's the fifth one on Chinsis. Pitt has gone to the line and converted 19 of 23. So Shinsis fouls out on the foul there with 25 seconds remaining. Florida's a team that for the past couple of years has come out of the guns, come out with their guns blazing. Very good starts and kind of ended on notes that uh, were less uh, than enthusiastic uh, in Gainesville. This team is going to reverse that trend. I think it's going to be a pretty good basketball team when that freshman backcourt solidifies. Here's Davis, so Florida has a chance to tie on the missed foul shot by Martin. And they got to be looking for Lett. Davis screening for Lett, but he's way out with Matthews on him. You see the game clock. Florida down three. Lett got fouled as he put it up. Matthews didn't mean to, and what a dangerous play that was for Pittsburgh. Had Lett been able to somehow make that shot. 11 seconds to go. We may see some cute stuff here. Paul Evans conferring. Norm Sloan has... I'm not sure. They could hit a uh, go for one and then uh, possibly miss the second one. Down three. They got to factor a way to quickly tie this game. There may not be enough time to, to make them both foul and come back. Nope. I don't think they have a choice now. I'd miss it. Yeah, if he makes this, they're done. I'd miss it. That's what he did. He went for the miss there. And Martin pulls it down for Pittsburgh. And throws it away. And the Florida Gators get life on the errant outlet by Martin with six seconds remaining. And now Florida will call a timeout. And they have plenty of time. Six seconds inbounding in midcourt. Oh, what a break. I tell you, it is the season to give, and it is more <laughs> blessed to receive than to give. And the way these two teams are playing, nobody wants it. Each has had a chance to make a bold statement here at the end, and just so much enthusiasm, they haven't been able to capitalize. And this one's still up for grabs. Tonight's college basketball game on USA has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Don't forget, Miami Vice comes up in its entirety next on USA. Next week, we have college basketball Wednesday night, Arkansas and Missouri. Two good games next week. Wednesday night from Columbia, Thursday night, Memphis State and Tennessee meet for just the second time ever in college basketball. Nine Eastern, both nights on USA. Florida does have one timeout remaining. We're looking at six seconds. Look for Pitt to play very tough perimeter defense around the outside to take away that three-point shot. It has been Matthews that has been tracking Lett, the most productive three-point shooter for the Gators tonight. I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if Pitt just absolutely stripped everybody at three-point land, forced the pass down inside. How about Fallon? Well, it, uh, well, they're in the bonus. That's not a bad move, except yep. you stop the clock and you give them a chance to go for one and go for that tip. Here's Lett, and he's fouled right away. Porter went for the ball and instead fouls. Of course, that's what Florida Lett was hoping for an intentional foul. They won't get it. It's a one and one, and that's a good play by Pittsburgh with four seconds. Well, I I just don't like to give him a chance to get organized. I, 
I think we know exactly what's going to happen here. They're going to hit the first one. They're going to miss the second one. And there's no seven-footer in there now for the Gators. That helps. So led to the line where he just missed two free throws, although the second one was an intentional miss. Darrell Porter was the fouler, and he has fouled out of the game. Four seconds, Pittsburgh leading by three, and Clifford let go into the line for a one and one. They had to go with the big guy because rebounding's the key here. They need a rebound. They bring Brooklyn in. That ain't bad. <laughs> That's nice to be able to go in the refrigerator and come out with the right one. Huh? All right, Bucky, now you're left. Do you make the first one here? Yeah, you make the first one, and then you miss the second one. Put it on that offensive board. Well, your best rebounder is on the right. That's Martin. You should put it on the left back of the rim about 10 o'clock, and it'll kick right, giving him a chance. Now a timeout taken by... No, well, they didn't see who took it. Does it? I, right if it Pittsburgh. was Florida, it's their last one. Pitt right. has two remaining. Now Pittsburgh took it. But you got to make that first one. Thank you for your support and invite you to return. Now it's been a good ball game. Florida led by 15 in the first half when they went toward and appeared to be ready to blow this thing open, but a scrappy pit team playing only a second road game of the year. Fought back, got to within five at the half, and it seemed like the game turned about five or six minutes to play, Bucky, when, when Shinsis and Davis were playing both with four fouls for Florida. I really thought, though, that the defense by Pitt, the man for man, taking away, let uh, just absolutely shut him down after a, a marvelous first half, 20 points at the half, and then giving him only one field goal into the last minute. Uh, I thought that was key, but the real factor is that basically Florida did self-destruct with just horrendous free throw shooting, horrendous. And uh, that's what drives coaches uh, to an early grave or, uh, or someplace other than the coach into those later years. Watching Norm Sloan on that bench, you know the guy's you don't two miss years. It at all. The guy's two years from retirement, and he's doing a whirling dervish down there. But he's a good competitor, and he is in the game. All right, here's Let, and he got the first one. 24 points, a career high. Now a two-point game, four seconds, and let's see how he plays this one. Pittsburgh is going to take a timeout if they get a rebound. Sean Miller looking over to the bench for instructions. Nate Bailey has checked in for Pittsburgh. I don't believe Pitt's going to call a timeout. Not if they get that rebound. Let it run. Oh, Let made it. They're going to force Pitt to inbound the ball in a one-point game. Brooklyn has it and is fouled with three seconds. Chapman fouling. It's his third. So Rod Brooken, who this year has made just 44% of his foul shots. That's not the guy they want to go in. Norm wants a timeout. He has one remaining. Norm Sloan has just one remaining. And this is... Oh, he didn't want it. What he was ta I think what he's trying to say is if, if he misses, he gets, right? Yep. Or no matter what, miss or make, I guess, take it. But they just took it. He did not want to ice the shooter. He wanted the timeout on the hope for Rod Brook and Miss. But the Gators have the right guy on the line, but they're now going to have to go coast to coast with three seconds remaining. Down one, should they get the miss. So it is an 88 to 87 lead for Pittsburgh. Rod Brook and he'll be at the line. And there won't be any other Panthers on the line with them. They'll be back at midcourt. And if there is a miss, they'll put token soft pressure on. And I know one thing Paul Evans is saying, for goodness sake, don't touch anybody. Don't touch a teammate. Don't touch a zebra. Don't touch a cheerleader. Nobody. This will be a non-contact sport for three seconds. How about this, Bucky? Bucky Warren Charlotte picked his dark horse final four team. Early Massimino and Villanova, they lose tonight to LaSalle in overtime. LaSalle 79, Villanova 74. That's going to make it all the richer when they play well at the end of the year. They have really struggled in right there, the local rivals. All right, it's a one and one by Brooklyn. He needs to make the first one to ensure Pittsburgh having a two-point lead. And there are no Panthers 
on the line. 17 for Brooklyn tonight. And he's worked on that breakthrough game that Paul Evans was hoping he'd have. And he makes them both. And in backcourt, this gives Florida just that prayer by left that is off. And the Pittsburgh Panthers come into Gainesville. And they are the first non-conference, non-SEC team to win in this building in five years. And a good win for a Pitt team that has had a tough week, losing at Duquesne Monday night. Pitt's 90, Florida 87. Thanks to our producer, Gary Dubin, director Billy McCoy. For Bucky Waters, I'm Ted Robinson. Thanks for being with us in Gainesville. And good night for college basketball on USA.